Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Are you ready to talk about the garden? Let's do it. To be a fluent, confident English speaker, you need to be able to have the words to talk about everyday life. We've already talked about some kitchen vocabulary, household vocabulary, bathroom vocabulary, but let's go outside today. Today I'd like to take you on a little tour of my vegetable garden. There's also a couple flowers and help you to enrich your vocabulary to talk about nature, the outdoors, and especially the garden. Are you ready? Well, let me get my hat on. Let's get started. I used to think that I didn't have a green thumb. This means that you're good at growing plants because all of my house plants were so sad and died. <laughs> but when I moved here and I started planting things outside, I realized, hmm, surprise, plants like sun, fresh air, and rain. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Let's start by talking about a couple different types of gardens. The first word that you might hear related to types of gardens is landscape. Now we often use this word when we're talking about changing the land in some way. That could be adding a garden, that might be adding a rock wall, maybe adding some drainage. Oftentimes a person who has this as their professional job, who helps you to shape the land in some way, they're called a landscaper, a landscaper. They might help you to know where you should plant trees or how you can shape the land so that there isn't flooding, these types of things. Very useful job. The next type of garden is a common one, a flower garden. So if someone asks you, oh, do you like gardening? And you say, yeah, they might ask you, what type of garden do you have? And you could say, well, I've got a flower garden. It's great for attracting pollinators. These are like bees and other types of insects that help to spread pollen to different flowers and help them to grow, help our world to become a wonderful place. Flower gardens are great. Add some color to your life. Another type of garden is a vegetable garden or an herb garden. Now notice that in American English, we don't say herb, the H. In American English, this H is completely silent. It's just gone. It's on vacation somewhere. Maybe it's hanging out in the garden <laughs> and we can say herb, herb. So here behind me, this is my vegetable garden. If you're only growing herbs, this could be basil, cilantro, parsley, these types of things that you use to garnish your food, that would be an herb garden. It's a great way to get started because we use herbs all the time and they don't take much space, much investment. <laughs> so you can easily grow an herb garden, maybe on a balcony or something like that. If you live somewhere extremely dry, you might have a rock garden. One of my neighbors has this. I live somewhere pretty wet, actually. It rains a lot here. But one of my neighbors has a rock garden, and I imagine it's because this is low maintenance. It's just a cool way of landscaping, and you don't really have to take care of it much. You just put some rocks down, make some cool designs, and voila, you have a rock garden. <laughs> Another type of garden, and this could apply to pretty much any of these that I've just talked about, is organic. I have an organic garden, or I like to grow organically. Now recently, in more modern times, this term has come to mean that you don't use any pesticides. There might be some organic pesticides, there might be a kind of gray area here, <laughs> but in general you try to avoid pesticides and grow organically. That's what I'm trying to do here. There are some pros and cons to that, which we'll talk about in a minute with some pests. <laughs> but there is a great way to be able to help nature around you, help the bugs, help the flora and fauna is by having an organic garden. Let's talk about some things you might wear in the garden. The first is a sun hat. I have several different sun hats because I'm always trying to protect my face or shade my eyes from the sun. It's uh, early morning right now, but this area can get extremely sunny. So a sun hat is really helpful. You might also wear a baseball cap. Usually sun hats are more for women <laughs> and a baseball cap is worn by either men or women. So something to shade your eyes, protect your face. You might also wear some gloves. I actually forgot to bring my gloves out right now for this video, so sorry. You can imagine gardening gloves are useful. I especially use these when I'm weeding. So when I'm picking things that might have thorns or that's prickly, it's really helpful for protecting your hands. And 
you can also wear boots. In a moment, you'll see those as we head into the garden, but you can wear some rain boots or gardening boots if it's muddy or if you want to just protect your feet a little bit more. If you're tramping around maybe uh, in a difficult area, you might want to wear some boots to protect your feet. But you know what? Sometimes I just garden barefoot and that feels nice too. <laughs> Next, let's talk about some ways that you can bring water to your plants. These are the tools that you need for gardening. The first one is a hose, a hose. Ooh. <laughs> this hose is great for reaching some far away places in my garden that I don't really feel like bringing my watering can to. And this is a watering can. You fill it with water and you water your plants. It's very useful. Next, we have a shovel. Now, both of these are technically shovels. This small one, we might call a spade or a trowel. I feel like trowel is more of a British English term and spade or shovel is more likely to be used in the US for a small shovel. But this is definitely a shovel. I use this for digging big holes, for scooping lots of things. It's hard work, but it's a useful tool. This is a hoe and this is a rake. A hoe is useful for slamming into the ground and breaking up the soil. There's kind of been a more recent movement called no-till gardening and this means you don't break up the soil with a hoe. Sometimes I use this hoe for even other things like if there's a root in the way, I can break the root with this hoe. And the rake is useful for scraping away some loose things on top of the soil or for moving the soil around in an easier way than maybe a shovel. Some other items that you need in the garden is some twine. Twine is the term for string that you use outside. It's pretty thick and weather resistant. You can tie up some plants with some twine. Also, I almost always protect my skin with sunscreen. You can call this sunscreen, or some people call this suntan lotion. It's not for getting a tan. <laughs> this is for protecting your skin, but you'll hear some regional terms for this. And I also sometimes wear bug spray. This is especially for mosquitoes. The mosquitoes can get pretty bad around here because like I said, we get a lot of rain. So depending on the month, July, August, September, mosquitoes are really bad and I hate to get bit. <laughs> so I sometimes wear bug spray too. And finally, I wanted to show you this. So I mentioned my, my garden is organic, but I do spray something on my vegetables when there are pests. So sometimes I use this oil. This is in a different container. It's just some oil I added here. It's called neem oil, and it's kind of like an organic way to get little tiny bugs to go away. So that's useful. And I also have a basket for carrying all the wonderful things that I've picked. So I just picked some charred leaves. These are huge, gigantic leaves. <laughs> uh, they're kind of bitter, pretty tasty, and they're colorful too. So you need a basket for carrying your vegetables or your flowers if you wanna pick them. All right, now that we have the right clothing and the right tools, let's take a look at actually the plants. How can you plant a plant? Well, there's two options. You can use a packet of seeds, which I didn't bring out here with me. I'm very unorganized for this video. <laughs> you can use a packet of seeds. You can plant those seeds directly in the ground or you can use a start. Now this is not a verb, this is a noun, a start. Sometimes we call this a plant start. And this is where you've gone to the plant nursery, a plant store, some kind of gardening store, and you bought a little plant. So for these peppers, oh, we have some peppers that are looking pretty good. Let's take a look at this one. <laughs> for these peppers, I bought them as starts. They were little plants that I bought from the nursery and this is kind of a fail proof way to have uh, plants grow at first i actually thought they weren't going to work and now it looks like they're actually getting some peppers cool you never know what's going to happen so i bought these as starts but for some other things like these beans which i guess you can't see here but i'll show you in a moment for these beans i planted them as a seed i just put the beans in the ground and they came up some of them worked some of them didn't I wasted some seeds, but that's just how I tried it. There are two words that are commonly associated with gathering vegetables from the garden, and that is to pick a vegetable 
or to harvest a vegetable. And I wanna quickly tell you the difference. In a garden like this, this is just my backyard garden, I would say I picked a pepper, I picked some beans. I wouldn't really say I harvested a pepper, I harvested beans because we use that word harvest for farms, for big scale gardens, something that's maybe more agricultural or industrial. There's a big crop. And in my garden, it's just, you know, one pepper here, a couple beans there. We're not gathering huge amounts of vegetables. So I would say, I'm going to go to the garden to pick some vegetables. I'm going to go to the garden to pick some tomatoes. These guys are not ripe yet, <laughs> but we could use pick for the garden and harvest for more big scale projects. There are a couple structures that are common in gardens, especially vegetable gardens. You will see a trellis. This is a trellis. It's actually a trellis that I made with just some wire and some wood. <laughs> but plants like to grow up the trellis, especially plants that are vines. Vining plants like to grow up a trellis. This is a cool, uh, a cool kind of spinach. Usually spinach is not a vine, but this is called Malabar spinach. I think it's so cool. It's got like a purple, uh, a purple stem and it grows up a trellis. It's pretty tasty. Mm, tastes like spinach, but it's a fun plant to grow up a trellis. I also have some raised beds. That is like a wooden box and it's helpful for containing the soil that I want to keep in there and keeping out the weeds. So raised beds take a little bit of effort. You gotta fill them with soil, you gotta build them, maybe you gotta buy the wood, but I have a couple raised beds in my garden and those are super helpful. You can also see kind of in the distance back here, I have a hoop house. This hoop house I've kind of opened up a little bit to get some more fresh air, but when it's cold outside, maybe at the end of the season in the fall, you might want to create a hoop house over your garden so that the plants don't get too cold. You can continue to grow a little bit into the winter. That's what I did with cabbage and some leeks and some onions, I think, too. But in the end, bugs still got inside and still ate it, but some of my cabbages grew, so I guess there was a little success. It's all trial and error. <laughs> If you can see inside this crazy tomato plant, there is a tomato cage. This is usually what we call the structure that holds up tomatoes because tomatoes grow on vines. But if you don't have a tomato cage, they'll just fall over and get all over the ground and they might rot more easily. So I have a tomato cage and it's working pretty well. My tomatoes are doing well. Usually my son picks them before they're pretty ripe, but you know what? Gardening with kids, there's a lot of uh, give and take. <laughs> this is the most insane tomato plant I've ever seen. It's huge, it's way taller than me, and it's sprawling everywhere. It exploded out of the cage, <laughs> and yet we don't have a single ripe tomato yet. It's got these cool little, let's see if I can show you, these cool pear-shaped yellow tomatoes. So they're gonna be like small pear-shaped tomatoes. And there's kind of a lot of them on this plant so far. I hope so because it's gigantic, <laughs> but nothing's ripe yet. Kind of weird, but hopefully it'll happen. Now, not everything in my garden is doing great. I showed you some cool looking plants that are thriving, but not everything does awesome. Let's talk about some of the problems that can happen in a garden, not just a vegetable garden, but a flower garden too. Well, one of the most common problems is pests, pests. As you can see, this uh, Brussels sprout plant, it's been in the garden since like March, I think, <laughs> and it is completely destroyed by pests. Because I have an organic garden, there's not an awful lot I can do. I covered it with a hoop house to keep uh, butterflies out. I covered it with uh, netting to help little slugs and caterpillars and everything not get in there. But you know what? Sometimes there's nothing you can do and you just lose some. We say you win some, you lose some. <laughs> so we might say that this Brussels sprout is not doing well. I'll probably end up just pulling it up and giving it to our chickens because it's not producing any Brussels sprouts. There's nothing I can do with it. So it either goes to the chickens or goes to the compost pile. Talking about compost, there are a couple different words that we can use to talk about what's underneath me right now. This nice dark 
soil. When we talk about what's on the ground, we say dirt. It's just dirt. But in the garden, we use the word soil to talk about this dark, rich stuff is called soil. And usually that means that it has a richer composition. It's got some minerals. It's got some good stuff for the plants. That doesn't mean that it has fertilizer. It just means that it is better for the plants. If you just plant your tomatoes in dirt, eh, they might not grow, but if you plant them in some nice rich soil, you have a better chance of them becoming beautiful tomato plants or chard or kale or cabbage or whatever you want to grow. If you don't have very rich soil, then you can add some amendments to the soil. And that's what I usually do at the end of each season or the beginning of each growing season is add some amendments. That's usually minerals or some organic compounds to the soil to make it richer and healthier so that your plants can easily grow. Like I said, if you just throw a tomato in the ground in the natural native soil where you live, probably won't do too well. So adding some amendments to the soil is really helpful. What are these green tomatoes? Can I eat them? Well, you could try. <laughs> in fact, there's a dish in the south of the US where I live called fried green tomatoes, and they're pretty good. But usually those are for leftover tomatoes or maybe ones that are just not getting ripe. But usually <laughs> green tomatoes or other vegetables that are not ready to eat yet are called unripe. Unripe tomatoes or maybe unripe peppers. They're not ripe yet, they're unripe. So what if they're ready to eat? Well, unfortunately this one down here is not exactly ripe, but in maybe another day or two, if no wild animals eat it first, <laughs> this tomato will be ripe. Ripe means it's ready to eat. If you go for a hike and you see a blackberry bush and you look at it and they're so plump and juicy, you might say, oh, perfectly ripe blackberries. What a treat. I can't believe I found ripe blackberries. A great word to use. What happens if they become black and goopy and really gross? Well, those are rotten. We might say that is a rotten tomato or those peppers are rotten, don't eat them. Maybe some kind of pest got to it or maybe it was sitting in some wet soil and it just rotted. Sometimes that happens, your plants might rot. A great thing to do with rotten vegetables or plants is to put them in the compost pile. So let's go visit mine. This is my compost pile. It's not exactly what you want to be showing on YouTube. It's kind of like your trash can. <laughs> but this is a huge pile of leftover yard scraps. Whenever we rake leaves in the fall, they go in here. It's food scraps. There are eggshells. There's old potatoes, rotten vegetables from the garden. This is a great place to create compost. And compost is wonderful for the garden. It makes rich soil like we talked about. So I have a huge compost pile. I'm using a non-turning compost method. Sometimes you have to turn the compost. It's a lot of work. I'm trying not to do that using another method. We'll see if it works. But something interesting has happened. I want you to take a look at what you see in the side of my compost pile. There is a tomato plant growing out of the compost. I didn't learn this word until last year, but we call this a volunteer tomato or a volunteer pepper or a volunteer pumpkin. It means that you didn't plant it on purpose. It just grew all by itself because it wanted to. It's volunteering to grow. <laughs> so I must have put a rotten tomato in the compost last year and somehow it survived. Usually the compost pile is pretty hot inside. It's rotting. There's a lot of microorganisms helping to break down the soil. But I guess this tomato lived and it's actually, it looks nice. It's pretty big for being a volunteer, but there are some problems. We have rotten spots on the bottom of the tomatoes. So it probably won't produce anything edible, but kind of cool, huh? I just put a tomato cage around it because I thought, what the heck, let's give it a try and see if we can get some. Can you guess what these are? Yeah, they're logs. <laughs> it's just a tree that's been cut down, but there's something special about these logs. We have planted mushrooms in these logs. Hi, kitty. 
I have no idea if those mushrooms will actually work, but I bought some mushroom spores. This is different than a plant. It doesn't have a seed, it has spores. And I drilled, I think like a hundred holes in these logs down here. It's covered in a weed now and some dill. <laughs> but I hope that some mushrooms will sprout out of these logs in the next couple years. I don't know. Hopefully we'll have some cool shiitake mushrooms in this little mushroom garden. <laughs> Another word that I forgot to mention is patch. Sometimes we use the word patch specifically to describe a strawberry patch. So this is a strawberry patch. We planted about 10 strawberry plants here last year and they exploded. <laughs> they went everywhere and we got a lot of strawberries in the spring, early summer. Now they're just greenery. There's no fruit under here, but you can use the word patch to describe a strawberry garden. We don't usually say strawberry garden. We say, oh, we've got a strawberry patch. And behind me, I have some asparagus. <laughs> asparagus is notoriously difficult to actually grow and get any asparagus from, so I don't know if we'll be able to ever eat any, but I don't know. It's an experiment. It's all worth trying. <laughs> well, hello there. <laughs> this is our little flower garden. It's beside our vegetable garden, and as you can see, it is swarming with bees and pollinators. This is excellent for our vegetables. It's bringing pollinators to the garden. Hopefully it is keeping away any kind of pests like aphids or slugs. I don't know, that's what they say about flowers, <laughs> but it is beautiful to look at and some of these smell great too. I wanna to show you a plant that's super cool. This is called okra and it's typically grown in the south of the US. It creates some long pods that you can break off and fry or saute. Some people say you can even eat them raw. I haven't ever grown this before, but these leaves are huge and it seems to be doing pretty well. It thrives in hot, dry weather. It's not exactly dry here, but they seem to be doing great and some flowers are coming soon. I have a little experimental garden over here I wanna show you. These are vining plants as well, but they tend to sprawl everywhere. Can you guess what it is? I wish it were watermelon. It's not watermelon. We have some of those over here and they're really small. <laughs> but this is a butternut squash plant and they get huge. As you can see, they're starting to take over our yard, but I hope that we'll be able to get some butternut squash. I got these from my neighbor's seeds. <laughs> they uh, gave a butternut squash to us and I saved the seeds, dried them out and planted these and they seem to be thriving. They're huge. They're doing great, and we've even got some butternut squash. Let me show you. Well, thank you for joining me on this tour of my garden. It makes me very happy to share this with you. This is a peaceful place for me to be able to enjoy a moment to myself. So thank you for joining me. I hope that you could learn some useful garden vocabulary so that you can describe the world around you in greater detail with more precision and also just no daily conversational English. <laughs> and now I have a question for you. Do you have a garden? Do you have any plants growing in your house or outside your house? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again the next time next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. Hmm. The next step is to download the free PDF worksheet for this lesson. With this free PDF, you will master today's lesson and never forget what you have learned. You can be a confident English speaker. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for a free English lesson every Friday. Bye.